Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video talking about the clone function that's available in the multi-protocol 4-in-1 modules in radios like this RadioMaster TX16S. Now, if you're in a similar boat to me where you have an aging Tyrannus, this actually isn't my Tyrannus, this is a QX7, uh, and you want to move on to this new radio, then one of the things that you might be worried about, I know I was, was that you might be able to copy all your models across using Companion, and we'll do that in a second as well, but then once they're in here, you've got to go and rebind them all, and that's going to be a pain in the butt because some of those receivers are going to be hidden away in the middle of foamies or hidden away inside quadcopters, multirotors, whatever. The cool thing is, is there is a feature in here in the latest versions of the 4-in-1 software called cloning. And what it does is this radio can learn the ID and details of the radio that you're cloning and then pretend to be that radio. So what that means is not only can I copy all of my models across from my other radio that I'm worried about giving up, but I can teach this radio what that radio's ID is and this one will then pretend to be that radio so I don't have to rebind any of those models. This will automatically connect to it. Now, that's one way of using it, where if you're moving from an older FreeSky radio or something onto one of these, uh, you don't have to rebind all the receivers, which is pretty spectacular. But it also means that you can have this radio clone another one, and then the cool thing is, is you can use either or radio for that particular model. Now, things like the FreeSky access system have the ability to have binds to multiple radios, things like the TBS uh, stuff, in Crossfire has multi-bind, but this is a really cute, neat way of doing it. I had the pleasure of talking to Pascal, the gentleman behind this technology. Uh, really nice guy. I'll put a link down below if you're interested and have a look at the project. If you are using this kind of stuff and getting enjoyment out of it, do what I did. Hit the donate button, send him a couple of bucks and keep the project alive. So let me show you how I'm about to transfer all of my Tyrannus models from my Tyrannus onto here and then make it so that this radio will then rebind to all of those receivers that were bound to my Tyrannus without having to change anything on the receivers. So here we are on the computer using Companion to copy the models around. And first of all, we need to make sure that we have the profile set for the Tyrannus that I'm about to plug in and copy the models from. So we're going to hold the trim tabs in the middle position, power it on, plug in a USB cable, and then when it's all connected, read all of the models from the radio. And there are all the ones. You can see here in red all the times I've accidentally got the receiver IDs different. So what we're going to do is we are going to save that onto the computer because we're going to need that in a minute. Um, I'd always recommend if you're going to be using OMTX, connect it to Companion and back it up every two or three months, then you're not absolutely stuck. So with that saved, Next thing we need to do then is unplug that radio. We can close all that out. Let's swap the radio profile to the new radio that we want to copy the models to. So I'm going to need to select the radio master profile that we set up in Companion. And then again, hold the trim tabs in the middle position and then press the power button and connect the USB cable at the top. Once that appears in Companion, then again, we can read the models back that are currently on the radio. Now, right now, there aren't that many. This is a relatively new, fresh radio that I've only just really started playing with. And then I'm gonna open the file that we've just backed up from the Tyrannus. Is it gonna war me? It's for another radio, another version of OMTX. It's gonna convert them, and it is. Be aware of all these warnings. You're gonna to have to go through and double check that all these models are okay. And don't assume that because you're copying them across, it's gonna do it perfectly. I'm just going to drag and drop all the models that I'm interested in having on the new radio into this new Tirana subfolder. This is a really cute way on these uh, funky radios with a color display to keep all your models separate. Now, take your time with this. Um, just make sure that you're copying all the ones across. Again, you've got the backup of the radio on your computer anyway, uh, but these are going to be the models along with their IDs that we're going to write to the radio in a moment. So now I've copied everything across, we can close the Tyrannus backup, and I'm going to write the models and settings back to the Radio Master radio. So now I've copied all of the models from my Tyrannus radio onto the new radio via Companion. And again, double check that they're okay. Go through each of them one by one. 
Next job we need to do then is to teach the Radio Master TX16S what the Tyrannus IDs are so that it can impersonate or clone that radio and talk to the receivers without having to rebind. Now we're going to turn on the multi stuff for the internal 4 in 1 that's in here and here's all the different protocols and there's loads and loads of different ones. Again links to that project from Pascal that lists all the ones that are available. Uh, it's going to warn me that the ID is already used, but then I've kind of got into trouble here, haven't I? I haven't been uh, watching my IDs on the old radio. But I'm going to scroll around, and here's how you can do things like uh, choose whether or not you want the cloned radio settings, whether you want EU, D16, D8, um, all these different settings. Now, that's normally what we do, but actually what we want here is not the free sky stuff like that. We need to see where it says free sky RX, and then we need to select clone transmitter. And that's that radio ready to go. So let me put that to the side. Next one then is we need to power up the radio and just pretend like we're going to be binding to any receiver. Now this works in lots of different free sky modes, D16, D8, whatever. Uh, you have to redo it for each of those modes. I'm only bothered about D16, so I'm just going to go for D16. But we can see here that we are all set. I'm going to start bind and it's going to start beeping. Now that is binding, I'm going to hit bind on this other radio. And what it's going to do is it's pretending to be a free sky receiver. It's going to hear the radio ID and details and it's going to store them on the radio in the D16 cloned bits and pieces. So now we can use that to connect to a receiver. So that's it, really, really quick. Again, you if you want to use D8, uh, you'll have to do uh, bind to them again using D8 protocol, full details of all of this stuff in that wiki. Okay, so here we are on the bench. Let me show you this in action. So I have my Tyrannus um, set up and bound to a little receiver. Let me just grab that and show you. Uh, so there it is. So um, I have to be careful not to get too close, otherwise it'll bounce out. So a little green light. We are connected. We are bound to it in D16 mode, and we have a receiver ID of 01. For this to work, the receiver ID needs to be the same. In D8, there aren't any receiver numbers, but if you're using D16, we're going to have to remember that. So remember that we need receiver ID 01. And there we go. It's gone red. I've turned the Tyrannus off. So let's get our Radio Master TX16S. Power it up. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the... Oh, into the model memory and I'll show you how it's doing this because look at that it has bound to the receiver it's pretending to be my Tyrannus so isn't that cool so let me just show you so here we've got FR Sky protocol selected D16 cloned and the receiver number is 01 which is the same receiver as the Tyrannus and that should have been copied across anyway and that is what allows it to connect if it isn't the same receiver number uh, then it's not going to work so if it has D16 cloned selected, then this is pretending to be my Tyrannus that it's just learnt about. Now I'm blown away that this functionality is kind of hidden away in the module. And for me and many others, it does mean that I can have another radio with all of my key models on that's going to pretend to be my primary radio in case something goes wrong. But it's also a fantastic tool if you are looking to upgrade from one older radio from FreeSky onto something with a multi-protocol module. It makes it really easy and straightforward. Using Companion, you can copy the models across. And then using the clone function, you can teach your new radio how to imitate the old radio so it can continue to talk to all the receivers that used to be bound to that other radio. Also means that if you just want to have two radios that you can talk to one receiver with, then you can absolutely do that as well. And you can clone one radio as many times as you like. So all of your multi-protocol radios could have the ability to clone your free sky radio or whatever it is you're using. Again, this is one of those really, really good ideas that it shouldn't be up to third parties to come up with. Pascal has 
played a bit of a blinder coming up with this technology and building it into the multi-protocol stuff for the four and five in one modules. This should have been done by FreeSky and the ability to clone radios to make it easier to move from one model to the other should have been part of how the FreeSky system works. They should have made it straightforward for you to move from one model to another. But one last big thank you to Pascal and the multi-protocol team for bringing us this kind of cool stuff that just makes our lives so much easier as pilots if you have more than one radio. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the Inner Circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.